All right, you ready to dive in? We've got a ton of info on the Xpeng G9 today. Is it really a Tesla Model Y killer? That's what we're here to figure out. Yeah, and we've got articles and reviews from all over China, Europe. It's going to be interesting to see how those perspectives differ. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpack this. We need to understand what makes the G9 stand out, right? How it actually mm -hmm. compares to the Model Y in specs and feel mm -hmm. and whether it's really living up to all the hype. Mm. But most importantly, what does it all mean for you, the listener? So where should we begin? Well, first look review kind of sets the scene. They're calling it a value priced, high tech, large SUV. And it seems like Xpeng is really aiming for global markets with this one, Europe especially. Global markets. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. And I'm seeing a lot about its charging speed in these articles. It's like a big selling point for them. Definitely. They're saying it's one of the fastest charging EVs in the world because of that 800 volt silicon carbide platform. Mm. And on top of that, they're really pushing the comfort, the high-tech features, and that X-Pilot 4.0, their advanced driver assistance system. Yeah, that X-Pilot system, I'm seeing that pop up a lot. Yeah. Right. And what about the European launch? I'm seeing it's already available there. Yep. First book review mentions it's available in three variants starting at UR 57,600. I think it'll be fascinating to see how it stacks up against those European brands. Yeah. Well, you know, we have to compare it to the Tesla Model Y. Let's dive into the specs a bit. All right, let's do it. Bigger size, better performance, they really break it down. The size difference is pretty noticeable. The G9 is a lot larger than the Model Y. So more room, that's always good. What about power and range? The G9 comes in both single and dual motor versions. Single motor gets you 230 kilowatts of maximum power, and the dual motor bumps that up to 430 kilowatts. Okay. And get this, the long range version actually beats the Model Y 702 kilometers on the CLTC range. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, so how about the price? Because that's obviously a big factor. The base prices are actually pretty close. But bigger size, better performance, I think you get a little more for your money with the G9, just because of all the features. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so we've got size, range, and maybe even value on the G9 side. But what about the tech? Smart driving is a kind of a big deal these days, right? Huge. And why the Xpeng G9 is the best choice? They really get into it. They highlight XNGP, which basically integrates high-speed expressway and urban road navigation all together. Okay. So that's a big deal, especially when you consider that Tesla's full self-driving is still under development in China. So they're kind of ahead of the game there. And I'm also seeing that they're using different hardware. Tesla is all in on the vision, but Xpeng is using LiDAR. You got it. Big and time. LiDAR, it's known for being better in tougher weather conditions, heavy rain or fog, though it does add to the cost. Makes sense. The first drive review, they actually tested out the XPLOT 2.5 system over in Europe. Oh, wow. And what did they think? They like it. They found it dependable. And they said the navigation system was really intuitive. So it sounds like Xpeng is focusing on making these systems easy to use, which is really important. Definitely. All right. And you know this is being marketed as a luxury SUV, so we can't forget about comfort premium features. Oh, yeah. Both First Look Review and why the Xpeng G9 is the best choice, they're raving about this luxurious interior. Multiple displays, including one just for the passenger, hmm. massage seats, super quiet cabin. Wow, that sounds amazing. I did see in the first drive, they mentioned the air purification system and how spacious the trunk was. So good for those family road trips. Right. And it sounds like the G9's actually got a bit of an edge on the Model Y when it comes to comfort. Well, bigger size, better performance, points out the G9 has those heated and ventilated seats. The Model Y only has heated. Right. And they really seem to have thought about everything. The headroom, the lead room, mm -hmm. minimizing noise, just overall comfort. Okay, comfort check, tech check. Let's get back to that crazy fast charging we talked about earlier. Right. First look review, they go into detail about these impressive charging capabilities. Remember that 800 volt platform? We're talking 10% to 80% charge in 20 minutes on a DC fast charger. Is that even possible? It is. And then there's an optional, what they call 4C charging, that can get you 200 kilometers of range in just five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. That's insane. How does that compare to the Model Y? Yeah, the G9 has definitely got the edge in this area. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> Sounds like the G9 is checking a lot of boxes. Yeah. But I'm seeing some skepticism in this range. How it's actually been received, even with all these amazing features. Interesting. What are they saying? Well, it sounds like the initial pricing strategy and just the sheer number of configurations they had at first were really confusing for potential buyers. Yeah, that makes sense. Too many choices can be overwhelming. Exactly. 
And then there are concerns about brand image, you, you know, compared to giants like Volkswagen or Tesla. Right. Xpeng is still a relatively new company, so building that trust, it takes time. Absolutely. Also points out some criticism about the naming convention, too, which I guess is a reminder that what works in one market might not translate globally. Right, right. I am seeing, though, that the G9 has had some success lately. Oh, good. What changed? Oh, it looks like Xpeng made some adjustments, like price reductions and promotional offers to make it more appealing. And they even have a story about a buyer who was initially really hesitant, but ended up going for the G9 after actually seeing it and driving it. That's cool. That's the power of real world experience. Oh, totally. Okay, so speaking of what's to come, we got some news about a G9 facelift from Xpeng Files for a facelifted G6 and G9. A facelift already? Wow, that's fast. What's changing? Well, there are some design updates expected, like a new front grille, updated badging. They're even refreshing the interior with a new steering wheel. But the big news, they're getting rid of the LiDAR option. Wait, no more LiDAR. So, it looks like they're going all in on a vision-only system for their smart driving tech. Wow, that is a bold move. I wonder how that's going to affect the self-driving capabilities going forward, and how will these changes stack up against the competition? Because this EV market is constantly evolving, right? It really is, and it makes you think about this bigger picture of the rise of Chinese EVs, you know? Why the x Bank G9 is the best choice for the wait-and-see crowd mm -hmm. talks about just how diverse and competitive this market has become. Yes. And where does that leave the G9? Well, they see it as a strong contender because of that blend of technology and performance and the value. And we can't forget x Bank's push into international markets, especially Europe. Right. First Look Review mentions that the G9 meets those international safety and environmental standards, which is a really big deal if they want to be accepted globally. Totally. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of ground here, so let's take a breath, digest all of this, and we'll pick up this deep dive after a quick break. You know, it's really fascinating how the G9 kind of gives us this snapshot of all these bigger trends. Right, like we're zooming in and out, looking at these really specific car features, and then zooming out to this whole global EV landscape. Exactly. But speaking of zooming in, I want to go back to the first drive with you for a minute, where they actually took the G9 on a family trip through Amsterdam and out to the countryside. Yeah, I loved that review. It felt so personal. You know, like, we were actually getting a glimpse of how this car performs in the real world. Definitely, not just test track stuff. And they seem to really love the interior comfort especially those reclining seats with the lumbar support. Oh, yeah. Essential for a long drive. Especially with passengers, right? Absolutely. And speaking of going above and beyond for passengers, can we talk about this 5D music cockpit for a second? Oh, yeah. Why the Xpeng G9 is the best choice makes it sound like a whole experience, not just a feature. It really does. They've gone all out to create this sensory experience. It's crazy. 28-speaker Dynaudio Confidence sound system with Dolby Atmos, vibrating seats. You've got ambient lighting, even fragrance diffusers. Wow, fragrance diffusers. So they're really hitting all the senses. Yeah, it's like turning the car into a mobile concert hall or something. I love it. It's definitely a unique approach. It feels like they understand that EV buyers today, they're looking for something that sets them apart. Yeah, they want that wow factor. And it's not just about the tech itself, it's about how everything comes together. The design, the materials, that whole feeling. What we often call fit and finish, those small details that elevate your car. From just functional to luxurious. Exactly, and it seems like Xpeng is really aiming for that premium feel, but without the premium price tag. Right, which is a tough balance to strike. It is. Okay, so I think we have to address the elephant in the room now. What's that? The LiDAR, or lack thereof, in the G9's facelift. Yeah, that was the big news for me. It's such a significant change because they were so reliant on it before. They were. And now they're going full vision-based. Seems like it. Is that risky? Well, there's a huge debate happening right now in the autonomous driving world about the best way to get to full self-driving. And some, like Xpeng was, they favor LiDAR because it's super accurate and reliable, especially in bad weather. Right, like giving the car another set of eyes. Exactly, that can see through the rain or fog. But it's expensive. It is. And it adds bulk. Yeah, which adds cost and complexity. Okay, so then vision-based, it relies on cameras and AI, which is theoretically more affordable, right? And compact. So it's more like 
teaching the car to see the world the way we do. Yes, precisely. But those systems are still being developed mm -hmm. and they can struggle in those same conditions where LiDAR is great. They can, that's the challenge. So it's that classic trade-off. Cost and simplicity versus, you know, potential performance issues. Right, right. So yeah, it's a gamble for Xpeng to ditch the LiDAR. But if they can overcome those limitations with their vision view system, it could be huge for them. Especially in terms of cost. Exactly, and accessibility. It could change the game for everybody, honestly. Especially with Tesla being so successful with their vision-only system. Well, that's the big question, right? Is vision going to be the industry standard? Or will LiDAR make a comeback? We'll have to wait and see. I want to circle back to that Saruch article. And what they said about the G9's pricing being so confusing at first. Yeah. It's interesting how something like that, even if the technology is amazing, it can really be hampered by bad marketing. Oh, absolutely. They were offering way too many configurations, too many options. It's overwhelming. It's that paradox of choice thing. Exactly. Too many options, and then you end up making no decision at all. Right, and they were bundling features too, so you had to buy things you didn't necessarily want to get the stuff you did want. It's like being forced to buy a whole cable package just to get one channel. Exactly. And that can lead to so much frustration. It makes people feel like they're not getting good value, which is really bad for a newer brand. Especially when you're trying to build that trust. But it sounds like they learned from that and they've adjusted their pricing and made some key features standard. Which is good. They're being responsive. Yeah. And it seems like it's helped their sales. Good. Okay, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the design of the G9. I'm seeing a lot of positive comments about how sleek and modern it looks. Yeah, it's a good looking car. First Look Review actually compared that bow-like glass house shape to the Lucid Gravity, Oh, which yeah. is a gorgeous car. That's high praise. It is. Seems like Xpeng really wants to stand out, you know? They're not trying to blend in. Yeah, it definitely has its own personality. And they're paying attention to the details too, those flush fit door handles, smooth front fascia, the signature Xpeng running lights. We talked about the interior, like, you know, the comfort and the features, but what about just the overall look and feel of it? It's very modern, minimalist, definitely focused on those big displays. Yeah, I'm seeing that a lot. Why the Xpeng G9 is the best choice. They said it has this very high tech feel, and they even mentioned that cool privacy filter they have on the passenger screen so it doesn't distract the driver. Oh, that's smart. It is, it's thoughtful. So it sounds like they've struck a good balance between the tech and the luxury. I think so, yeah. High quality materials, a design that feels sophisticated, but also inviting. Okay, so speaking of the driving experience, yeah, I want to go back to that first drive review. Okay. How did they describe it? They loved it. The first thing they mentioned was just how quiet the cabin was. Oh yeah, that's one of the perks of electric cars. Right. No engine noise. So peaceful. They even called it eerily quiet. That's awesome. Like they really invested in the sound insulation. Well, and the G9 has that double wishbone suspension in the front and a multi-link setup in the rear. Which is usually found in sports cars, not SUVs. Exactly. So it sounds like it's got the comfort and the capability. The best of both worlds. Right. And that dual chamber air suspension, it lets the car adjust to different road conditions and driving styles. Like a personalized chauffeur. It is. That level of customization is becoming really important in luxury cars. And speaking of personalized, they also mentioned Xpeng's Xmart OS in that review. Oh yeah. How did they like that? They were impressed with the navigation system. They said it was really intuitive and easy to use and most importantly, dependable. Which is not always the case with in-car navigation. Right, you never know what you're gonna get. Exactly, but it seems like Xpeng put a lot of work into making theirs accurate and user-friendly. And they adapted it for the European market. They did, which shows they're really paying attention to those regional needs. Yeah, which is smart. It's a good reminder that the software is just as important as the hardware these days. Absolutely. It's all about crafting that positive user experience. And it's another example of that holistic approach we were talking about. It is. And I think that's where traditional auto makers are struggling a bit. Yeah, they're trying to catch up. But the companies like Xpeng, they have this advantage because they're not bogged down by all those legacy systems. It's like they're starting with a clean slate. Exactly. And that agility could be their biggest strength as this market keeps changing so quickly. I think so. They can adapt and integrate new technologies much faster. Okay, before we wrap up this part of the deep dive, I want to touch on something that doesn't always get talked about with EVs. What's that? Sustainability. Oh yeah, that's important. It's easy to get caught up in all the tech and the performance, but the environmental impact, it matters. It does. First Look Review pointed out that the G9 meets those EU3R 
certification requirements, reusability, recyclability, and recoverability. Okay. Over 85% reusability rate, over 95% recyclability rate, meaning they can reuse or recycle most of the car's materials. Oh, that's really good. It is. It really minimizes that environmental footprint. And it shows that sustainability, it's not just about electric powertrains, it's about the whole life cycle of the car. Right, it's got to be a holistic approach. Totally. You know, what's really striking to me about the G9 is how it embodies this tension between cutting-edge technology and the realities of the marketplace. Yeah, I see that. It's like they're walking this tightrope. They are. On one hand, they're pushing the boundaries with things like the 5D music cockpit, the XNGP self-driving system, that crazy fast charging platform. Right. They're not afraid to experiment. Not at all. But then they also have to be aware of the price. They have to appeal to a wide range of buyers. And overcome that brand perception hurdle. Exactly. It's a tough balance. It really is. And I think it shows that just having the coolest technology isn't enough. No, it's about how you present it, how you market it, how the user experiences it. And about the whole package. The whole ecosystem. Yes, well said. Something to keep in mind as we watch this whole electric vehicle world evolve. Definitely. All right, we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back to wrap up this deep dive into the Xpeng G9. It's really great to see automakers taking those steps toward more sustainable practices, you know? Yeah, I think it's a good sign. Feels like a step in the right direction for the whole industry. I agree. It shows that sustainability is more than just a buzzword now. Right. It's a real value. And it's bigger than just the environmental piece, too. Well, for sure. It's about creating a more ethical and responsible industry as a whole. Absolutely. Thinking about the social impact, the economic impact, not just the bottom line. Right. Thinking about the bigger picture. Yeah. Recognizing that our choices have consequences. That we're all connected. Exactly. Speaking of connections, can we go back to the G9's global ambitions for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Let's revisit that. We touched on it earlier, but I think it's a really big deal. A Chinese company trying to compete on that world stage. It really is. It shows how much the auto industry has changed. So much. It wasn't long ago that Chinese automakers were mostly focused on their own domestic market. Right, and now they're expanding so rapidly. And bringing some serious innovation with them. They are. The G9 is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Designed to appeal to a global audience. The tech, the performance, the value. It's ambitious. And it's more than just selling cars too, right? Oh, yeah. It's about building a global brand, building that trust. Changing perceptions. Which is a huge undertaking. It is. It takes time. But it seems like x is committed to it. They do, and they're not the only ones. Right. We're seeing other Chinese EV makers doing the same thing. BYD, NIO, Lyoto. All pushing into international markets. Which is exciting. I think it's a good thing. I do, too. More competition means more innovation. Better products for everyone. Exactly. So it's definitely an interesting time to be watching this whole industry unfold. It is. I'm really curious to see what happens with these Chinese companies, you know, long term. Me, too. Okay, so let's bring it back to you, the listener. We've looked at all the details of the G9. We've compared it to the Model Y. We've talked about these global EV trends. What does it all mean? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is that the auto industry is in the middle of this massive transformation. It really is. Electric vehicles, they're not just a niche thing anymore. They're becoming the norm. They are. And companies like Xpeng are leading the way. And the G9 is a great example of that. I think so. Cutting edge tech, comfort, performance, all at a competitive price. But it's more than just the car itself, too. Right. It's the symbol of ambition. A company that wants to change the game. And whether they succeed or not, it's going to have a ripple effect throughout the industry. It will. It will. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with a few final things to think about. Okay. Good idea. What does the G9's global expansion tell us about the future of this whole industry? Yeah, that's a good one. Can Chinese automakers really challenge those established brands, the European, American, Japanese companies? And what does all this mean for the consumer? You know, the everyday person buying a car. How is this going to change the cars that we drive, the tech that we use, the choices that we make? These are big questions. They are. There are no easy answers. But that's what I love about these deep dives, you know? It's about exploring those complex issues. Challenging our assumptions, getting a deeper understanding of this world. It's about giving you, the listener, the information you need to participate in these conversations. Be more informed, be more engaged. So keep asking those questions, keep learning, and stay tuned for more deep dives on the topics that matter most to you. We'll be here. Until next time.